Go now, child of Siphis. Walk in the shadow of fear and bring glory to our dread father. When you unravel that mysterious scroll and reveal a messy handprint, smudged in black ink above the words, we know, time is short for the recipient. When you are marked by the cult of the Dark Brotherhood, there is no way to escape the grisly fate. Despite being seen as a cult of void-worshipping misanthropes, following an evil deity named Siphis, no force in Tamriel has ever fully been able to rid the world of this organisation. Emperor Titus Mede II himself stated, I told him, you can't stop the Dark Brotherhood. Never could. And his words were proven true by his assassination. During the events of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, this group were at their weakest, almost at the point of disbanding. Yet somehow it rose from the depths of darkness to instill terror into the hearts of Tamriel citizens. In this video, we'll be telling you five facts about this ominous organization, and what better place to start than with fact number one, its founding. The Dark Brotherhood originally came into being as a splintering of the already well-established Morag Tong. The Morag Tong is a secret society of master assassins based in Morrowind and Solstheim. The Morag Tong worship the Daedric Prince of Murder and Plots, Mephala. The lover of Siphis, known as the Night Mother, was believed by the Tong to be the mortal incarnation of Mephala. But after birthing Siphis's children and her resulting actions, she was deemed too cruel and she was killed. We'll go more into detail about this very soon, but 30 years after these events, an unnamed man began hearing voices in his head. These were not the words of Siphis echoing in his mind, but rather the Night Mother, and as a result he became the first listener of the Dark Brotherhood. Fact number two. The story of the Night Mother proved to be the divide between the already morally ambiguous Morag Tong and the new faction known as the Dark Brotherhood. It was going to take some seriously malevolent acts for the Morag Tong to dismiss what they once thought was their prince in mortal form, and the Night Mother delivered on those acts. The Night Mother, bride to Siphis, the Dreadfather, is responsible for providing some organization to the religious cult of the Morag Tong and the Dark Brotherhood. Clients pray to the Night Mother and perform the Black Sacrament. She she then passes the request onto her listener, who voices the will of the mother onto the speakers. The Night Mother bore five children to Siphis, but what came next caused some to worship her more dearly and others to shun her altogether. Siphis bid her to kill her five children in his name, so the souls could be offered to the Dreadfather. She accepted the task and Siphis rewarded her by allowing her to be his bride. Her actions led to her being killed and her house burnt to the ground. Her remains were found under the statue of the lucky old lady in Bravil. Fact number three. The Dark Brotherhood's culture and the rituals they undergo are sacred to all members of the guild. At the core, the Dark Brotherhood is an organization with the purpose of professional assassinating and killing. Beneath the pageantry, the Brotherhood get the job done and take their reputation as a professional institution very seriously. Nevertheless, the extreme loyalty and martyrdom they are able to inspire in their ranks comes down to their cult-like culture. They are united under their attempts to please the Night Mother and the Dreadfather, and most of their motivation directly relate to the will of these two. It is the ultimate honor for a Dark Brotherhood member to be told they have pleased the Night Mother. Therefore, these two figureheads operate much like the gods of a religion, and their worship of Siphis and the Void is fundamental to Dark Brotherhood culture. This religion even affects the organization down to its hierarchy, but we'll delve more into that soon. The ritual known as the Black Sacrament is an essential part of Dark Brotherhood culture, which allows outsiders to contact them. The ritual involves creating an effigy of the intended victim, assembled from real body parts. The contactor needs a heart, a skull, bones, and flesh, all encircled by candles for the rituals to commence. A dagger must then be rubbed with the petals of the nightshade plant before being used to stab the effigy repeatedly. If all of this is done while the contactor whispers, sweet mother, sweet mother, send your child unto me, for the sins of the unworthy must be baptized in blood and fear, then the ritual is complete and the night mother will pass the will of the contactor on to the brotherhood. The last important facet of dark brotherhood culture is the five tenets. These tenets are critically important for keeping members of the organization in line with the image of the group. These laws include Tenet 1, never dishonor the Night Mother. To do so is to invoke the wrath of Siphis. Tenet 2, never betray the Dark Brotherhood or its secrets. To do so is to invoke the wrath of Siphis. Tenet 3, never disobey or refuse to carry out an order from a Dark Brotherhood superior. To do this is to invoke the wrath of Siphis. Tenet 4, never steal the possessions of a Dark Brother or Dark Sister. To do so is to invoke the wrath of Siphis. And finally, Tenet 5, never kill a Dark Brother or Dark Sister. As you'd guess, to do this is to invoke the wrath of Siphis. Fact number four. As mentioned previously, the Dark Brotherhood functions similarly to a religion and has a clear hierarchy known as the Black Hand. 
It is made up of five members. There are four speakers representing the fingers and one listener representing the thumb. Each member of the black hand has a silencer, a personal assassin who operates as the nail to the finger. The listener has the honor of hearing the commands directly from the night mother, while the speakers are tasked with enacting her will. Fact number five, the Dark Brotherhood suffered a severe downfall thanks to the destructive power and chaos transpiring during the Great War in the Fourth Era. Even in Skyrim's loading screens, it is mentioned that the organization is now but a shadow of its former self. When the city of Wayrest in High Rock was lost to Corsairs, the Wayrest Sanctuary was raided and left in tatters. Similarly, in Bravil, the sacred crypt of the Night Mother underneath the statue of the Lucky Old Lady was destroyed and the current Dark Brotherhood listener, Alisan Dupra, burned alive. A false listener listener named Rasha rose up in her place, but after failing to name the binding words to prove his gift, Cicero, the keeper of the Night Mother's coffin, killed him. At this point, little remained of the Dark Brotherhood. Cicero documented the fall of the sanctuaries in his journal, as he resided in the Shadin Hall Sanctuary until he was the last one left. The sanctuary in Falkreef was the only other sanctuary still intact, and here, the five tenets had been discarded, along with two eras of tradition and culture. It then fell on the Dragonborn of Skyrim, after finding Cicero's broken down wagon to decide the fate of this organization. Would it fade into obscurity or return to prosperity? Subscribe to Fudge Muppet for more content just like this and give the video a like to please the Dreadfather. If you want to hear more about the goings on at Fudge Muppet, check out our social media links in the description. There you can keep up to date with everything we're up to. Thanks so much for watching as always guys. My name is Drew and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.